Hi, in the morning, if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my, so all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks about looks into overcoming youth marginalization. It's all about youth today. It's all about looking on ways we can actually improve as young people in the economic sector. So in this in studio, I am joined by Oscar Kim so Oscar Kimani is the vice president of a foundation known as Mentathon. Yeah, Mentathon correct? Foundation, yeah. exactly. Mentathon Foundation. Yeah. And um, Karibu sana. Uh, Karibu Michelle, Happy New Year. Happy New Year yeah, to yeah, you. How are yeah. you doing? I'm very okay and, and I'm happy to start off the week and the year here with you. Uh -huh. and more interesting discussing entrepreneurship yes uh, it's a pet topic it's something very close to my heart so uh -huh. i look forward to some great 20 30 minutes with and you i'm here. looking forward towards this conversation because it goes back to the rooted aspect of it exactly. from the young people from way back in high school yeah. we're going to level up in different aspects and just look on ways we can actually uh, overcome the marginalization yeah. and also the mentality aspect of it when it comes to business yeah so i'm looking to have this conversation with you, Oscar. So great, every young person has an inspiration. So yes. I think the critical part is how do you bridge where they are right now mm -hmm. to where they're going to go ahead. And I was I was looking at social media yesterday, people saying, you know, the concern whether young people will go back to school or not. And I know that question is heavy, but the issue is how do we make people in school see the value of what they are doing right now mm -hmm. in the next 20 years? Because I think, uh, just to give you a brief about Mentathon, uh, this is an out of campus initiative. Uh, with some friends of us who are together in Strathmore and other campuses where all of us were going back to our previous high schools in our own informal way. So we ask ourselves, the five of us are very interested in this topic, why don't we come together and make it slightly bigger and make it, what I call corporatize it, mm -hmm. uh, make it an organization so you can do it better. So a leading thought in Mentathon is after post-election of 2007, uh, our president and co-founder Tim Kipchumba and a number of people from Strathmore, they did a research but unpublished about um, what made young people become violent in the last elections of 2007. Be part of the violence. Yes, actually. what made what makes a young person who was non-violent mm -hmm. to become violent, or what can make a person who is non-violent to change non-violence. So they did a number of interviews, I think around 12,000 interviews, uh, looking for various reasons. Why did you do what you did? That is Kibera, Huruma, Mathare, across the Rift Valley and across the Kisumu Western area where there's a lot of violence, a number of pockets of violence. And there were many factors. And you know, they're using a number of simulation tools to try and ask themselves, what are the few factors that you can say that has the highest cause and effect? And they had a number of like five to six factors, but they were looking for the most impactful factor Mm -hmm. that made somebody who was just going on with their normal life Lives to be but decided I will burn somebody. And when you look at violence, not just the act of physical violence, but drugs is part of it. Uh, crime is part of it. Because you know, right now we have a lot of teenage and young, young people getting into crime. And, uh, and the factor was very simple. It's what a factor, factor? called self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is a belief in a young person that their effort can get them what they want in life. Mm-hmm. If you believe as Michelle that your effort here in y Y254 can get you what you want in life, you don't get violent. If you lose that belief, you get violent. Mm -hmm. Now that's when you trade off that belief with a politician. You mm -hmm. believe if this person makes it for politics, I can get what I want in life. If that person is threatened that they may not make it in politics, you fight for that person, but not just for that because person to make it for life, but because you believe this person can get mm -hmm. you there. If you lose that belief, you think maybe drugs, a little bit of alcohol, or a bit of inducements here and there can get you a little bit of pleasure right now that feels like the success you want, you get into it. Or if some people believe crime can get them what they want. So when you find all this uh, fight about saying crime does not pay, the thing is not telling young people that crime does not pay. Mm -hmm. It's to ask themselves, why did this person lose their belief that whatever they do with themselves, they can get what they want in life? Mm -hmm. And that's now what is our leading thought. And now, how do we do that now? We use examples of me and you as Michelle. And we put you in front of a thousand high school students and you tell your life. From the time you finished high school to when you went to college and to where you are right now.
And now what you do is, is you create that bridge between where they are, which is where you are, mm-hmm. and where you are right now. When that bridge is very clear that your efforts have progressively gotten you what you want in life, mm-hmm. that person increases their level of self-efficacy. Part of it is, uh, sometimes as young people you may think you are underprivileged or you don't have everything that is required. In, most case, in other cases, it could be true. It could be true. Yes. But sometimes, I think many of us have met Michelle looking good and in studio. We've never met Michelle before. So if we meet Michelle 10 years ago and know where she was in high school and whatever she has had to do and the waking up early she has had to do and maybe she came to KBC and was a volunteer for a year before she got this slot, we realize, by the way, what we have can give us a chance like Michelle. Mm -hmm. But if you only know Michelle from the girl we see on TV, there's a high chance that the thing you really want becomes Mm. the most frustrating thing. I didn't wake up like this. <laughs> exactly. Yes. But I see many of us meet you like that. So, mm-hmm. so we started doing that in 2016, where we organized countywide editions. So we started the Elgeo Marquette County, where we brought all high schoolers together. All oh, right. Uh, and we just get themed events and mm-hmm. concentrate students and concentrate mentors. All oh, right. So that it's. Uh, we continue. Uh, we concentrate mentors. Uh-huh. Uh, 2017, we jumped. We always jump election years. 2018, we realized that the events are too big. We made them into eight events. Oh, yeah, before we get into the eight events. Yeah. Because, uh, Oscar, you're just flowing, yeah? You're oh, taking yeah. us. You are flowing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask a question, ask. yes? So, I'm, I'm so sure for my viewers, yeah. uh, maybe they've been to high school. They have met, uh, me- you know, inspiration mentors. mentors mm. uh, people give out inspirational talks yeah. in school yeah. and uh, I'll give you my experience yes. it's one thing for for you to hear a story of, a, of uh, an inspirational story they come tell you uh, how they made it from point A to point uh, point B you feel really impacted yeah. and then the, your, the mentor who came to your school just goes and life continues but yeah. if, if you look at your life and every situation things are still the same, still, still the same. What are you guys doing different? Okay, that's a very beautiful question because at the end of it is this. Number one, uh, there's a difference between mentorship and motivational speaking. Okay. And that's a fast explanation. Motivational speaking is sometimes is five ways to, or how to's. The difference is this with mentorship is your personal story. The beauty of personal stories is this, they are 100% correct because they have worked. No wonder you're here in the morning. In Y24, Y254. So the first difference on what we do is how the story is told. We don't do motivational speaking. And we train all our mentors and all the speakers into how to tell their story. Because it is not, don't be an extra set of parents to the high school kids. They are okay with two if they have to. There's so much commanding around students. So you have to always take a different approach. If you look at the school system, if you look at older people. And I always tell people when you meet a younger person, don't tell them how to, listen to them. Or more importantly, tell them your story. The truth is this, your story is beautiful and your story is confirmed. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is this, we don't do motivational speaking. And none of the guys who speak does motivational speaking. It is tell your story in half an hour. Everyone Mm -hmm. is given half an hour to tell the story. But secondly, Mm -hmm. afternoons you always break them into groups. You're getting it? So we do very intense sessions, very early from 8 to 1. We are very, very intentional and very early in the institutions. And what I like about high school students, if you tell them the event starts at 8, their schools arrive by 7.30. Mm-hmm. So in the afternoon, we break them up into sessions. And now you as Michelle, we give you a group of 100 girls. You sit down somewhere and you speak to them. Now, there's a lot of now asking questions. There's a lot of engagement with you. And you have a nice with time when you do the feedback forms in the evening. Mm-hmm. The stories are great, but the interactive sessions are even greater. Because they get a chance now to ask what you never said. They ask you, and you find the things that inspire young people about you are not the things we think as grown ups are the biggest things that are about us. People want to hear your story. People, want, people are still looking for that light that can light theirs inside that make them sad. So we balance those two sessions. Number one, we don't do motivation speaking, it's life stories. But two, we always break them into groups. And that's why you have always had to increase the sessions to make sure you have lesser groups that you can manage. So now, even if you have 20 mentors in one venue, we, even if you have 2,000 students, you can break them into 100, 100. Okay. Or if you have 1,000, can be 50. But no, when you used to have fewer events, we would always have extremely big events that is almost impossible. And then, of course, everyone we meet on our way, you include them now, becomes a mentor. Oh. So it's a beautiful experience. We always have a way of growing mentors as you go on in life. And every year, 
because now you've done three years. Mm -hmm. We have a maybe double list of mentors that we had before. And that makes it easier for us to allow the students we mentor in high schools to have a better one-on-one -on -one experience. Oh, yes. right. When it comes to you choosing the mentors, yeah. how do you like uh, make sure they are credible? Yeah. In When they come to tell stories, you don't want people who just tell stories just to motivate Oh, them. definitely. That so they are legit. There is a test. Okay. We always have, we are very intentional. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing is this, is people you have met in life. Some you have not met, but we know their stories. I mean, now, Michelle, I've met you. You're a mentor. It's easy to invite you because I've had an interaction with you. So we always have a vetting criteria to make sure. Of course, you know, when you're dealing with students, content is very controlled. Uh, because, you know, what you have to go alongside what the ministry considers content for high school, non-political, non-sexual, non-adult, uh, non-discriminatory non adult conversations. So the first thing is this, we always vet who is mentors. So who is going to speak, who is going to be placed on in front of students is vetted in advance. Yes. And then we have sessions with all of them because mm -hmm. our team is, is quite huge now. It's possible for us to know who are you going to meet. And with life, people learn how to tell their stories. When they're given a guide on how to tell their stories, we almost have a 99% success of people going uh, alongside. Oh, yeah. As you mm -hmm. can see, it's yes. a hall full of, of energetic young people. Young, I, I believe those are young ladies. No, those, those are high school. It's so a mix. Boys and girls. Oh, just that the a, ones who are sitting in front were girls. Okay. But it's mixed. The, where the focus of the camera was just the, the focus of the camera, ladies. the ones who are sitting in front. <laughs> but if you go through our social media handles, we yeah. have a thousand and one photos and you can tell the mixed audiences. All right, and that yeah. brings in the question of uh, uh, during this time whereby we were back at home, yeah. during the, uh, the time when COVID was really hitting quite hard yeah. and I uh, was you know students were back home yeah. and there was there's been a lot going on the issue of early pregnancy teenage yeah. pregnancy then there's the issue of crime yeah. drugs yeah. now when you come to mentorship it's one thing to mentor and it's another thing whereby this young person is dealing with real issues exactly. from back home uh, maybe he or she got addicted uh, during this you know span where they were time frame where they're back at home, yeah. issue of uh, early pregnancy. How do you, you know, me the mental aspect mm. of it, is there psychological help? How do you guys go about it? First, that's a great question. And I'll explain it. This problem has not started with COVID. Uh, there's what you used to talk about. Um, I think, do you mind if I just talk about this before oh. they flip over or you just continue? Let, let's talk about this and then we can. Okay. These are very interesting numbers. Uh, when you're looking at, at why are mm -hmm. we doing some of these things, mm -hmm. you'll find one in, every, one in three children or one in three students don't have a mentor. And, and that was one of the major reasons why we're asking ourselves, what do you do about that? Uh, there was some UNFPA data that was there, around 379,000 children falling pregnant in 2017 in high school. And I remember there was two schools, one school in Narok, one school in, uh, in Thinkinlifi, where 95% of the girls were pregnant. And you see, all pregnancies and crime and dropping out of school is what we call young people uh, uh, substituting education for short-term low-income gains mm -hmm. you'll be shocked as number one reason why guys fall off is, is marriage marriage is one major reason and not just the ones who are getting married even the ones who are married second uh depending on where you come from agriculture or small-scale holder farming and that mainly affects the places where there are a lot of large tracts of land where i come from in Murang county is border border where a guy prefers don't pay school fees buy me a bike there's nothing wrong in that bike. But the reason why we want to keep these young school and students is there was, a, uh, there was a data that was given there by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that every extra year a young person spends in school, they increase their chances of earning more income by 8%. Every year of schooling, increase your chances of earning income because they increase your knowledge and increase your, 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 your opportunities. So the issue is this. How do we keep young people interested in school? And remember that what I told you before is, is what will make them not lose their faith that whatever they're doing right now in Form 2 or Form 3 or first year and second year will get them what they want in life. Mm -hmm. And what you're trying to stop is, is what makes a young person to decide, I have five, six acres around, I can do potatoes and make money. Mm -hmm. Or my parents, I will not go to school because the, every bike guy around here has 500 shillings at the end of the day. If you multiply by 365 days, it looks like a lot of money. So what makes me spend so many years in school and do that? So Probably the person is thinking in the aspect of back at home, the, the situation, poverty. Exactly. Or poverty. Or seeing other young people who have gone to school before you and don't have jobs.
So the issue is this. You have to always give an example. Because remember, the kind of youngsters you are dealing with right now, or young people, we are very visual. It's what you see. Mm -hmm. As you find, there's a lot of things being placed in front of us, from music to arts to content that we consume. The issue is this now, is it possible now to change the kind of people you place in front of them and show people who worked hard? Michelle, I'm sure you worked hard to be where you're right now. I'm, I know you have to be here by 7 every morning, irrespective of traffic, because you have to prepare for your show. The previous night you have to work and know, what am I do tomorrow? You read about myself and Farah here. To be ready for us this morning is hard work, is resilience. Is it possible for you to tell the story on how you decided not to pick up short-term gains for better long-term gains. Now, mm -hmm. those things you want to get off young people, they are not best instructed. They are best exemplified. Mm -hmm. Where you have Michelle in front of them, or you have Farahia who was ahead of yes, me here, uh -huh. and they tell how they have lived those things. What you find is this, you have some great effect on it. And sometimes we even get that, even in grades. When you get, we, are, we get every child who comes to the program, we get a feedback form. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you go back to the school, they can actually attribute increase of grades to how the program was well run. Okay. Because now even the ones who are almost falling off the wayside and wondering, what am I doing in school doing high school history in Form 3? Why is this thing going to take me? Now they find a reason. Now they have a reason because Michelle came and she did history. Okay. And she passed in history. And that history has helped her where she is right now. So if you can create that visible path in front of young people mm -hmm. and show hard work, we show resilience, we show, we show that the person did not mind discomfort now because we're working for something better. They show, they show effort by that person that Michelle maybe was an intern here for a year. And she woke up every morning to do a show. But now that we are celebrating her as a TV show, as a TV host, we, we show what has been behind that. And we have found that to greatly change how young people view things. And, that, and look at even globally. Look at, look at the, effect of, the, effect, the effect of Barack Obama in, <laughs> in the U.S. history of young black people doing something different and actually rising to the highest office in, in the world, being the U.S. president. So what those examples, if you look at the story of Barack Obama, the story was bigger than his candidature. Mm -hmm. Because what he did, he showed many guys actually, you can do it. Because before, a lot of young people in the U.S. would either do basketball or crime. But now, beyond that, now you can become president. And as you find the storytelling of Obama to date okay. is one of the biggest successes or that changed the U.S. All right. Going back to the couple of events that you hold down, yeah. apart from uh, the high school, yeah. you mentioned earlier on that there are eight others. So, so what you do is this. One edition, we break it down to a number of events. So like on day one, you have four events. Day mm -hmm. two, you have four events. Okay. So Mentadon High School is one program. The second program is called, called Mentadon Enterprise. Please repeat that again. I'm saying so what you usually do is this, when you go to a county, because it's a county-wide event. Yes. So to be able to bring the children together mm -hmm. easily, mm -hmm. on day one we have like four events, mm -hmm. and day two we have another four events. Okay. You're getting it? So that now you can be able to do like 2019, we did 23,000 students. So you have to break, uh, to break them down into many events. So I'll give Mark we did eight events, uh, like keep here we did seven events, around 15 events. So you can tell it's an average of 1,000, 1,200 per event. So that now we can be able to take down to manageable numbers. But now Mentagon High School is one program. The other program in all called Mentagon Enterprise, which is, I mean, I listened to Farah here who was ahead of me on this show, is exactly the end result you want to hear about. Is when you look at young people in, especially out of school, when the people in campus and in college, can they start realizing or even seeing the economic opportunities that are around where they are? Because every area has an opportunity. And how does the program help so when so, it comes to identifying these opportunities? So how the program helps is the same thing, examples. Mm -hmm. When look at Farahia ahead of me here saying on how she did, she even saw example, uh, opportunities like PISA. She had access to that knowledge that was not even available over here. So we have seen young people start opportunities that are so relevant to where they are, but it is not the every kind of, of high life environment. People start small businesses. People start consulting. I, we, have, we have helped convert some accounting students to become bookkeepers for people wherever they are. So you hear the CPA for, you can purely do books. But there is a major farmer where you are that the guy is stuck on doing books. Are there books. professions who help out? Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's the same mentorship process. The training is skills plus mentorship. Mm -hmm. So if you're training a bunch of accountants or students who are doing accounting, you get some senior accountant 
to come over and help them, give them now the real idea on how it works, and then give them some few tools. Right now, with all these online accounting softwares, you don't even you can help set up an accounting platform for somebody even mm -hmm. on phone. Mm -hmm. So you do the training with professionals who are mentors, mm -hmm. and then you give them some a little bit of tools that these things are available. Okay. Some of these guys who are doing media, we help them with social media management skills and trainings because everyone needs a social media account managed. 